Hey gang, welcome to the Gray State. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. As you can see, I'm in my Jeep. We are heading down to Bladesman's Knife Shop. I've mentioned it before on my channel. Uh, I got about a 20 minute drive down here. Mark, the owner, is a super cool dude. He's gonna be giving us a tour. Maybe we're gonna take a look at some stuff for a holiday. You guys are thinking about gifts, maybe getting gifts, giving gifts, all that kind of jazz. Um, but I think we got you covered today, at least from a knife perspective. So give me about 20 minutes and I'll see you down there. Hey guys, I'm here at Bladesman's Knife Shop in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I got with me Mark. He's the owner of the place, and uh, I just want to say, Mark, thanks for coming in on your day off and sure. doing this video. So guys, what we're going to be doing today, it's really simple. Um, we're just going to be taking a look at a bunch of the different knives and things that are going to kind of be cool for a holiday this year. I know some of you guys, we have all different kinds of viewers, things like that. And I really wanted to come in and give back to Mark a little bit. I'm not affiliated with Mark. Um, I'm not an employee. He's not paying me to do this. I'm not getting free knives. Hint out of doing this, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but it's one of those things where Mark's a really big supporter of the military law enforcement first responder community here in town. And I've picked up a ton of knives from Mark and I'm gonna be picking up a lot more. And it was really cool. Um, I kind of found this place out of just chance. I heard a radio ad of all things. And it was one of those things where I came back into town. I, I myself, I moved back for family. And uh, it was one of those things where I was looking for a place where I could buy some cool knives. And I was disappointed because there was one place on the north side of town. They went out of business. And then I heard the ad about Mark's business on, on the radio, like I said. And I stopped in and it was like game over. I mean, it was like I found my destination place. And every time I've come in, Mark's been super cool. I've known I've probably been coming in for about a year now. I yeah, think or so. Probably about that, yeah. Probably about that. And uh, it's one of these things. He's just got a ton of really cool stuff. Um, and he's got stuff that can um, really covers the gamut. You know, it's not just the tactical stuff. It's a EDC lifestyle place, anything. He's got clothing. He's got accessories. He's got just a lot of really cool stuff. So I just wanted to come in today and just kind of have Mark kind of show us around his shop and give us some gift ideas. Maybe if you want to give somebody a gift or maybe you want to give some information for somebody to give to get you a gift, that kind of stuff. There isn't really a whole lot to this, but we're gonna be taking a look at some really cool stuff today. So cool. so that's kind of the tip off. So Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got here, um, the business and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, you know, I'm a lifelong knife collector. I started when I was probably seven, eight years old. I remember my grandfather gave me a little pocket knife when I was a kid and ever since then I've been fascinated. And I've, I've collected for over 40 years. I'm short my age now, but. Um, hey, we're all there. You know, so. Yeah, I've been collecting all these years, got into, uh, you know, all different kinds of knives over the years, collected a little bit of everything. Um, started going to knife shows probably 15, 15 years ago or so. I started collecting custom knives. Uh, but really, and um, I was living in Florida for about 20 years, and, and uh, my father passed away, um, and my mother still lived here in Fort Wayne. And, uh, you know, I just... I felt like it, was, uh, it just wasn't right to leave her here by herself. My brother, both of my brothers had moved away, and I decided to move back to Fort Wayne and kind of take care of my mom. And, uh, you know, I spent, you know, 25 years working in the corporate world and decided, you know, after I did a few interviews here in town and thought, you know, I, I just wanted to do something different, and I uh, just had enough of the corporate world, decided to do my own thing, and I thought, what better, you know? Knives are my passion, so I decided, you got to do what you love, right? I decided to do make a business of it, you know. And right so on. I, you know, I decided when I wanted to do this, you know, I, I I looked around Fort Wayne, there was no knife shop, there was not a knife shop really within a hundred miles of here. And I was like, wow, I can't believe there's just no place that has a good selection of quality knives, you know, within a hundred miles of Fort Wayne. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna open my own shop and really focus on the. The, you know the high-end production brands also carry some customs but you know I'm, I'm an authorized dealer for you know almost most of the big brands Microtech, Protech, Hogue, Spyderco, Emerson, Zero Tolerance, Benchmade, uh, Medford Knife and Tool and you know and several others uh, I even carry Shun uh, Kitchen Cutlery so you know I, I really wanted to focus on the on the top low brand have a place that people could come to you know get their knives in hand you know most of the big knife dealers are online stores only. Right. You don't have an opportunity 
to put a knife in your hand. And I was always been a, you know, I got to, I got to touch it, feel it, see, yep. see the quality, feel the quality kind of person I am with everything. And I, I just decided that, you know, this is what I wanted to do. And I wanted to have a destination place and, you know, it's really worked well, you know, the business has done great. And, you know, I think people appreciate to have a place here in town that um, carries, you know, all the top brands of one place. I mean, I get people driving from Michigan, Ohio, Illinois. I even have people from Kentucky come up because there's just not a lot of locations where you can see it all in one place. So, yeah, that's kind of the story of my business and how it started. And, you know, here we are. We're growing. We're it's growing. been about, yeah. So I've known Mark for about a year now. And it's one of those things that we always talk. He's also a gun guy, too. And I think the point that you brought up about coming and touching and feeling, too, is really important because it's one of those things where, you have to feel comfortable with what you're using mm -hmm. and just how it feels in your hand Absolutely. is really, really important. And, you know, for me, it's one of those things where being able to come in and touch the stuff and take a look at it and just kind of check out the actions and things like that right. are a super big deal. And so it's a, that just for that reason alone, it's super cool. And then you also have a pretty good web business now too, right? So you do yeah, online. Uh, Blademansknifeshop.com. About 90% of my inventory is available uh, there. Um, I'm still adding stuff there all the time to try to keep up. It, it can get difficult sometimes to keep up with the website, but yeah, not about 90% of my products available there as well. And uh, yeah, my business has grown, it's doubled both in store and online over the last year. So. That's awesome. Um, it's awesome to see just a small business, and even in the midst of COVID and stuff like that, that's been going on. Just the success stories just keep coming yeah. along, you know, so I hope you have many, many, many more years of success that way. So. Um, the other thing too is that um, you're also on social media. You got Facebook, right? Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Blade Man's Knife Shop. Yeah, for both of them. Yep, for both. So. so follow Mark at actually follow Bladesman's Knife Shop at Bladesman's Knife Shop on Instagram. It's Mark who's taking the pictures and putting stuff up all the time and making it really hard for me not to come in. And then uh, <laughs> it also, <works. laughs> it, it does work. And then you can also find me, of course, at Gray State Medic on Instagram. So okay. Um, the only thing that we got left to do is a pocket dump. What do you got? Well, today, uh, well, I have left one of mine in my jacket, but I, um, I have my trusty uh, Emerson Combat Karambit that I carry pretty much all the time. Nice. Um, it's it's my comfort piece. I you know I, I spent many many years in, in martial arts and I trained with Karambit, so this is kind of my my comfort piece. Like I said, this is something that I feel comfortable with in my hand. Right. You know, and maybe not the most practical knife for most people, but I would say if, you know, whatever you're going to carry, train with it. Yeah, exactly. It's a ripper. And so for me today, my pocket dump is my Microtech Direct Delta DE. It's my comfort piece, kind of like yours. I carry it with me. You guys know I'm big on dual purpose. So I carry it with me in my personal life. I carry it with me at work. Then I've got, generally I have a couple on me. Then where is it at? I go go digging. It's my Microtech Exoset, not to steal some thunder, but it's super cool. Little money clip job. And then a pen, my Hogue pen, the one I did my 20 minute <laughs> video on a tactical pen. So that's what I'm carrying today. All right, cool. So let's take a look at some knives. Cool. All right, guys. So we're down to business. We're taking a look at some cool knives right now. So um, I think where we're at first, we're going to be looking at some of the more tactical stuff, right? We're going to be looking at a lot of stuff today that kind of fits a lot of different um, you know, uses. And I realize not everybody is going to be working and need something that's super tactical all the time, nor maybe would they not want to. Um, but this stuff's going to be a little upper end starting off um, in some of the prices. We'll get to them here in a second, but we're going to be taking a look at a lot of stuff today. So don't let the prices right up front discourage you um, if you're looking for gifts or it's kind of outside of your price range. But we wanted to take a look at some of the automatics first. Um, and then a word about automatics really quickly too. Like we're super lucky here in Indiana that we can basically carry whatever we want, right? right? You Automatics are legal for anybody to own. Um, not necessarily the case in some of the other states, correct? Yeah, so. correct. Uh, you know, some states have laws about no automatics. Some states require um, below a certain blade length. Some don't 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 allow double double edge. So I I definitely um, suggest you check your state laws uh, for you know for what what exactly is available in your state. I mean, some states even allow you to have them, but you can't carry them. So it, even every law, every state's the laws can be a little weird from state to state. Some states are like you can have them, but the automatics just can't shoot the blades out, kind of a oh, thing. Well, that's actually illegal everywhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the old ballistic knives. Yeah. The old ballistic knives, the true cards. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. So, um, all right, so cool. Yeah, let's take a look at what'd you pull out for us today. Okay, uh, let's start with got a couple of pro techs here. This is part of the TR series. Uh, super, super popular knives. Um, folding automatics. We'll start with the smaller of the two, the TR5. Um, 
You can see folding automatic. It really flip open nicely. Has the safety lock that you can lock the blade in place or lock it closed. Um, just a great, great. Has the finger grooves. It's just a really nice carry size. It has a nice little finger choil here if you want to choke up on it. So it's just a really nice carry carry knife. Uh, this runs two hundred and ten dollars in, in this um, in this uh, variation. There are several variations available. Um, just a really nice knife, aluminum handle, very lightweight, uh, carries very uh, very um, nicely. So who do you see actually? Would this be more like this would be like a true EDC then? So it would be somebody who's kind of like maybe they're a business person and I mean, they're wearing khakis. I mean, honestly, anybody. This is like a real. This could be a tactical knife. This could be an everyday carry because it's so lightweight and. One of my favorite knives because of the size, you know, it's the blade is long enough to do anything you really need to do it for, but not so big that it's, you know, that it's going to be bulky or hard to carry. Um, you know, it comes in a lot of variations. Um, you know, you know, you can get the black blade. You can get the, uh, it has, it becomes in a textured finish. With, it's with just a lot of different blade. options yeah, then. There's different options. So this has been a super popular knife, I think, mostly because, well, number one, Protec makes some of the best folding automatics on the market. So it's a, it's just a great quality knife at a at a really nice size, and I think a good price to it, two hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, that's not too bad for an automatic at all. This is kind of its big brother, the TR4, full four inch blade, so it, you know quite a bit bigger, but exactly the same um, you know features. It has you know opens and closes exactly the same way. You see how hard it fires, how it shook in my yeah, hand. Yeah, that's super smooth it. though. But the thing is, you can hear how effortless it, it, there's like no drag on the blade at not all. Not at all, not at all. You know, this and this has you know the same feature with the lock, the same finger grooves. Um, but if, if you have bigger hands or if you just like a bigger knife, this is this is probably the knife for you. It has the same finger choice. So if you really want to choke up on it, this is I mean, it's a really nice knife. This is probably a little bigger than what I normally carry, but I'll tell you, this has been a super popular knife, especially for people who like. A true bigger tactical knife, right? Or someone who has large full hands. size, yeah. yeah. Or they're just cutting bigger apples, right? And that one, at the, and with this, in this variation, this one runs two eighty. Okay, cool. So um, next, we'll go over to uh, the Benchmade Infidel. This is uh, one that Phil really loves, and he has one. I do. This is the uh, new limited edition that they made for this year, and it uh, has an upgraded S thirty V steel. Blade, and anyone who knows about the Infidels know they've had this in D2 for forever since for 2006. Like, I was gonna say like 15 years, so yeah, it's, it's, been it's a up long there. Time. It's been up there. So, aluminum handle and the color is fantastic on this blue and black. Um, works really well. I think this was a it just seems upgraded all around. I agree, and that's really what does. I put on my video like between the two, between my 3300 and the 3300 BK. I think this particular knife, and you guys saw it on my other video if you haven't, go check it out. But it's got an audible difference in the action. I mean, it just feels tighter. The play that I had in my original 3300, which is the D2 version, had a little bit of blade wobble in it. Um, unless you're going like with the GNG, you know, deadlock or something like that. Mm -hmm. you're, this knife actually had hardly no play at all. And it just feels a lot crisper, a lot lighter. It just feels different in the hand. We've talked about it. I don't Absolutely. know if it, I don't know if it's just the S30B steel compared to the D2. That's part of it. Maybe it's the whole package after they, after they upgraded the steel. But it just feels different. I, I agree. I, I, as soon as it came in and I started playing with it, I was like, wow, this feels a, just feels a lot different. It just feels better. I mean, it just works smoother. Right. So I was I was pleasantly surprised. So I would definitely say if you have an opportunity, whether it's come in here or another shop that has them, if you get a chance to go and handle one, I definitely suggest doing it because I think you'll notice a difference between this one and and the older version. And what's this one clocking at? This one clocks in at four fifty. So this is uh, you know higher end. This one's only going to be made for a year. This is a, a limited edition version. They started making it. You know, I think in mid year maybe. Um, so probably by early next year, it's going to be phased out. Um, I don't know if they're going to continue to make one with S30V, but this particular model will only be available for a limited time. Right on. For those of you hearing that, that's 911 going off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> next, we'll move on to the Microtex. Like yeah, that. absolutely. Phil's, Phil's favorites. My favorite brand. It's what I carry daily. And he uh, stole my thunder a little bit, showing, uh, showing his Exos set earlier. But this is the Microtech X set came out earlier this year. Um, has really been a popular knife. Um, it was really just designed to be the money clip knife. You can see it has the money clip on the back. Yeah, so it's like Phil showed you with his, uh, he's got some cash put in there. Some people like to carry it in their pocket like that. Some $100 people, bills, y'all. Yeah, player. <laughs> <laughs> some people like, uh, some people like to clip it on their pocket like a regular knife. 
but it, it's been a really good design. It's, I mean, it's it's super um, comfortable to carry because it's very lightweight. Sold a ton to people who like who have to wear, you know, have to wear a business suit or right. slacks, you know, for every day, and they really can't carry a bulky knife. So this kind of it kind of fits what they can carry on a daily basis. Yeah. Also, surprisingly, which I never would have thought of, this has been uh, very popular with the ladies, and I'll show you why. When I had a lady first buy one of these, she was explaining to me why she bought it. She said it looks like a makeup case. And I'm like, what? And she go, and then, it, you know, bell rang in my head. She's like, yeah, I want to carry a weapon, but something that doesn't look like a weapon that when I put it in my purse. Because, you know, she worked at a hospital downtown. She's not right. supposed to have, really have a weapon at work. But she needed something to carry back and forth to her car because she had to walk sometimes at night, you know, a couple blocks to get sure. to a parking garage. So this is something she could put in her purse. Um, doesn't look like a weapon. Take it out, carry it in her hand while she's walking. Blade just long enough to do enough damage. It, yeah. Yeah. A couple inches plus. So super popular um, for both guys and ladies. And I, I can I, totally see that. Never, I've sold probably, you know, I don't know, half a dozen to ladies since, since I, I, of course, I'm using that story now because it, uh, ladies are like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. So Yeah, I've thought about picking up one for my SO as well. And it's one of those things where even the Exocet, I mean, the, the blade length itself, when you look at it, and sometimes the pictures of it make it look like it's this short, stubby little thing. It's actually very usable, too. Mm -hmm. I've used it, and I like the fact that it's got a, you know, more surface area. So I've used it for, um, I don't know, breaking down some boxes or opening oh, yeah. the Amazon packages yeah. and stuff like that. But it does a fantastic job for that, and it's a more than capable backup if it's not your main. So that's why I usually carry a couple of them, and I, I've actually gone to the part where, you know, I've pulled my... I've gone to that instead just mm. because of the fact that I don't want to be using my, you know, my Duroc for some more utilitarian stuff, and I feel completely comfortable doing that. All right. So what's the price on that? Uh, this, this variation, 260 they start at 250 Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean. They've got different blades too, right? They've got, like, you can get yeah, Tontos. There's, and, a, there's a Tonto version just that just came out as well. So, yeah, been, been, a, been a pleasant surprise. I, I wasn't sure about when I saw the model what I, what I thought of it, but since it's came in, it's done, it's done very well. Uh, I can so. see it. It's a good one. Um, next, we'll move on to the ever popular, forever it seems like the Ultratech. Yeah, um, probably the best selling out the front on the market for for years and years. It seems like that that and the Infidel are the two that always kind of get like pitted against each other, yeah. right? You know, they're those are the two that were always that. Um, yeah, and, I, and, and obviously this knife's been out forever, so most people are aware of it. Either had one or know somebody that's had one. Um, super slim design, very lightweight, easy to conceal. Um, comes in a variety of colors and blade shapes and all that. Um, I just picked this one because it has the distress finish, which yeah, is kind cool. of cool. It's kind of it's a new thing this year that they're doing. Um, and that's kind of a popular thing now. The whole distress, the whole look. battle worn, weathered right, kind of right. a look to so it. That's been popular. The Ultra Tech starts at uh, 280 um, and goes up depending on you know they come in all different variations: blades, uh, serrated, non serrated, tanto, double edge, single edge. So there's all kinds of variations. You can get into the fancy ones that have like carbon fiber and stuff. But uh, this is kind of the uh, standard at, at 280 and, and goes from there. Um, super great, popular knife forever. Can't go wrong. Is that, that 204 one. on that one, the steel? Um, I believe this one, it was 204P, but they do make they do make some in M390 as well. Yep. Um, moving on to kind of the big the big brother of, of uh, Microtech, the Combat Trudon. Now, this is a big knife. But surprisingly, not too heavy. You know, it uh, gives you a bigger, thicker handle for someone who has large hands or someone who wants just a big knife to carry. Um, but very comfortable to carry because, it's, because it is an aluminum handle. They use the same steels on these. I believe this one's 204P as well. But they do make them in M390 now also. These start at about 485 and go up from there. Yep. Um, so, you know, not in everybody's price point. But, you know, if you like a big knife that's quality, once again, Microtech. Just like Benchmade, lifetime warranty. So if you have any mechanical issues, they will take care of it. Um, you know, popular knife. They, they they sell well when they when when they're in stock. And I think the the Combat Trudon. I, I like the size of this knife, and just for you know a couple of different reasons. One, you know, I like I've always told you I like out I like one handed operation, mm -hmm. and that's what I really like about the out the fronts. You know, sometimes there's you know, do you really need an out the front? Is it more novelty? Right, everyone wants that switchblade stiletto mm -hmm. thing. Um, but personally, I find a lot of use in them. And the other thing I like about the Microtex that I've 
talked about in the past in a video and stuff is that they also have a really good high quality glass breaker on them too. So if you're thinking about, you know, that EDC thing where you maybe, I know there's people out there who carry glass breakers on themselves or they have them in their vehicle, but you know, I've talked about it in the past, but my direct Delta, I've got chipping here. I've got my own battle worn finish going. I've got, a, I've got a little bit more work to do on this one. Um, but this glass breaker pulled an old lady out of a Camry um, on the north side of town. And so it's one of those things where I was really, really, um, I was happy to see just how well it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you get those glass breakers and they're just like, I have a pair of Leatherman Raptors that I used my glass breaker on. It nearly broke my hand before it broke the window and then it <laughs> literally broke the nylon impregnated handle ah. and shattered in my hand. So um, it's a good size too. So you think about self-defense, right? If you need to use that side of it, yeah, those kinds of right. things. And then also it's just a really, the micro textures have a really good feel. So if you kind of need to give yourself a little bit of more support behind a closed fist as well. So right. cool. right on. Cool, so let's go take a look at some other stuff. Great. All right, so I think now we're gonna take a look at some classics. Well, these are some new, uh, actually some new knives from Spyderco. New, yeah. see, look yeah. at there. New, I, right? I see the big old bird's eye on there and I'm like, <laughs> it's unmistakably Spyderco. Well, you know, I think everybody is so familiar with the regular Spydercos, you know, the Duras and Delicas and yeah. the paramilitary series that have been, you know, out for several years now. I wanted to show some either I wanted to show a new take on the paramilitary series and this one of the new knives that Spyderco has put out this year just to uh, kind of mix things up a little bit show something different. Nice. Um, we're going to start with uh, this is the new uh, of this year the paramilitary three lightweight. Um, so a more economical version of the, the paramilitary um, has the FRN handle that Spyderco has made famous um, and the uh, compression lock, which makes oh. everything. Oh, that is slick. Easy to do with one hand. You know, just you can just see how easy that opens and closes. So you can, you know, talk about automatics with, with one hand. This is like why the paramilitary series has been so extremely popular. That compression lock on the back makes it so you can do everything one handed. That's cool. So just a, a really nice option at a hundred bucks. So it gives you a. Uh, it's so lightweight too. Yeah, super lightweight. Um, oh, chop my finger off. <laughs> you can open. You can open it. You know, with the just with the thumb and flick it, or you can. Some people do the back spider flick. You know, from the back. But you know, it's uh, it's just a super n nice, lightweight knife. Nice carry size. It is super lightweight. Yeah, so it's um, a lot lighter than I was expecting it to be, yeah. which is really nice. Super cool. Um, and moving on, this is a kind of oh a price on that one. Hundred dollars. Oh, you said it. Yeah, hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, this is a completely different knife, a collaboration knife that was done. Um, Warren Cliff Blade. Um, this is a Spyderco Canis. Um, I love this knife. This is actually the last production Spyderco I bought myself because I just it has the feel of a karambit in hand, and I it's like I told you before, I love my karambit. Right. Yeah. It has the same compression lock on the back, so super easy to open and close. But when you put it in reverse grip, which I like to use. Oh, yeah, I can see what you're doing just, there. It just has the feel of a karambit in hand. So I really like this knife. Um, carbon fiber handle, so it's super lightweight. You can see it's pretty slim also. So it, even though it's a rather large knife, it carries much smaller. It's super lightweight. Um, I, I just really, really like this knife. And, you know, and... Myself, I, you know, I'm a custom knife collector now, so I try not to buy too many production knives, and right, that, that digs into my custom fund. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So this this knife, I, I really like, and I, I I've added this to my uh, my um, regular carry EDC uh, rotation. That's cool. So what steel do they use? This um, this one is a S30V. Okay. Um, and um, you know, like I said, carbon fiber handle, and yep. uh, this goes for 195. That's not bad at all. Yeah, not bad. That's at super all. cool. All right, so we're just kind of moving down the line. What do we got next? All right, um, I picked uh, three different knives from three different companies just to show some different tactical knives. We'll start with the smallest. Uh, this is the Hogue EX01, EX um, the flipper, button lock. Just a nice little flipper. 2.75 inch blade, so very uh, small, easy to conceal. I really like this knife. Um, I actually have one of these myself, just as a nice secondary knife. Has the uh, has a safety lock on it also as well. Aluminum handle. CPM 154 steel, so it's a really nice knife. Uh, these will start at about $130 um, and go up from there. 
Um, th these are actually also available in an automatic. So for a few more dollars, you can get this in automatic that's cool. too. That 154 steel is just a really good steel that's easy to manage. Very good all-purpose steel. Right. Like if so, like some of the stuff you're talking about, like on the the micro, like the S the M390, right? If you don't know what you're doing, it can be a, it can be a pain to sharpen. Yeah. And it requires specific diamond stones and things like yeah, that, right? Into, you get into some of those harder super steels like M390, L Max, L Max, S110V. Those can be really, really difficult to But sharpen. something like a 154, especially at that price point, makes it just a super good entry level, just a good knife just to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the Hogue um, at, you know, I said this one starts at about $130. I think this, yeah, this one is about $130. Moving on to. But real quick, the Hogue, though, we, we guys. I think one thing I want to talk about Hogue, though, real quick, if I'm not mistaken, you can talk about it, really, is that we know them from their gun grips. Absolutely. Right? That's where they got their start. But they started working, was it Hinderer that they did a collaboration Hogue? with originally? Well, or? they've done collaborations with several different uh, gun companies. Um, but obviously, you said they, they're well known for their gun grips, been yeah. in the gun grip business for many, many, many years. But surprisingly, most people don't know this. They've been making knives now for 10 years. I, when I did my research years. on my pet, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize. Hogue's so, been doing it for 10 years now. Yeah, so it's um, it's they've been very popular. They were they were very smart about how they got in. They you know when they did it, got into the uh, knife business. They they partnered with one of the most famous knife custom makers, Alan Olishowitz. That's who I was thinking on, of. On their design, not Hinderer. Who you know who's, who has designed knives for a, a lot of the com big companies, um, but he he designed uh, most of Hogue's knives. And um, including this one, so I mean, very good quality. Um, um, so if if you like Hogue products, they even have some of their some of their knives even have the same materials on them. You're talking as, like the, as, you're as talking like the G10s and the yeah, they have some of the same G10 G Mascus they call it um, yeah material. Like if you're familiar with like the uh, the Sig Extreme series, that they have those kind of handle materials on some of their knives as well. So, Super cool. Very cool. Very cool knife. Uh, moving on, this is the new the new knife this year, the ZT. 357. Um, I think this is a great value at $150. Um, yeah, for ZTs, that's a well, good the fact price. That this has 20 CV steel in it. I mean, and, wow. and to get 20 CV at $150, I think is a really good value. Um, this is also, for those of you who like assisted, this is an assisted knife. So that, you know, not auto, not auto, but assisted. So a lot of people still like that. We're familiar with some of ZT's older models. I was going to make an auto joke. It's like near beer. For knives, <laughs> right? But the assisted, a lot of people don't want automatics. And assisted yep. is more, I think there's times where, especially in the, the ZTs, it's one of those things where the assists are so good mm -hmm. that you're almost to the point where why spend the money for an automatic or if you can't have one, right? right. They're, they're almost 95% there. Right. And it, you, you see, when you pick up this knife, it just feels solid. I, I hold, hang this to Phil. I don't know if he's handled this knife before. But it just feels solid. It's, it's G10 handle. That but feels great. It, 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 the handle just feels dense and feels strong in your hand. It's a, it's a nice design. It's not a real big knife, which I, it's a really nice carry size. I like the stone wash on it too. Yeah, but really nice um, stone wash, bead blast. Just, yeah. Um, kind of look on the uh, on the blade. Um, Liner lock. It, it's yeah. So it's it's a it's a nice knife. It it um it carries well. It's you know it's it's a really nice. And I said for I think for one hundred fifty dollars, that's a really good value at 20, with twenty CV. Well, the thing I immediately noticed too is the scales are actually very low profile, and mm -hmm. the inner liner is beefier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kind of I'm going to put up there to the camera guys so you guys can see yeah. it. But you can see how just how thick the inner liner is rather than the scales. Mm -hmm. I think that's why you probably you get that. Like I said, it almost feels like a dense. Yeah, it feels hefty. It feels hefty when you pick it up it, in a good way. But 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 not heavy. But right, that's what I mean. Yeah. It just feels like you got something super solid right yeah, there. Absolutely, um, and that it's like run, that runs at, starts at 150, um, and the, with the black wash at 160. So, super good value if you're looking looking for a really good knife. Yeah, know, totally. You know, that's uh, at, at, I think a good price point. Um, you really can't talk about tactile knives, I think, without talking about Emerson. Of course not. Um, this is a model that you don't really see probably every day. You, everyone's used to seeing the CQC sevens and the Commanders, so I just wanted to have something that's a little bit different. This is the ETAC, um, kind of an elongated Tonto, uh, a bigger knife. So if you like a bigger knife, this is this has a, a bigger handle, but it gives you that nice protection because it has that nice groove for your hand. It just feels real solid in the hand. Um, like almost all Emersons, it's a 154M steel with chisel grind. gives you that strong blade edge. Yep. Um, the, the aggressive G10 that really, no matter if your hands are sweaty or dirty, gives you a really good grip. 
Um, just a real good solid knife, and of course the famous Emerson Wave opening system that you saw earlier with my Karambit. Yeah. You know, it'll pop right open just like an automatic, basically, because you're pulling it out of your pocket and it's open. So um, this one runs about 240. Um, but you know, th there's a, a ton of different designs with Emerson. If, if you like tactical knives, it's it's a really good. Um, yeah, it's hard, a classic. Really good hard use knife. I mean, you can't talk about tactical knives and not bring Emerson into the discussion. Absolutely, absolutely. And they, you know, because they've done the same thing. Like with Sig, there's the there's some Legion series Emersons out and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it kind of it's another more crossover kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And just Emerson's always just been their top notch stuff. Great. All right, cool. We're gonna move on. Move on. More toys. <laughs> I see some Benchmades. Yes, of course you have to show Benchmades. Um, um, I decided to start with, of course, the immensely popular Bug Out series. Incredibly lightweight and popular knife. This is, I mean, they, this was kind of made with a backpacker in mind. Um, I mean, it's you, wouldn't, you almost won't believe how light they are when you pick them up. Um, the Benchmade Axis Lock, um, so it's, you know, they just... And that's unique to Benchmade, right? That's a patent of theirs. Well, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. This this was a, this is their lock, but you, you'll find a similar design now in, in other companies. In other companies. But this is like made so you can just pop it open if you like, or you know you have the thumb stud. But you know it's made so you can do it one handed. But you know this is really was designed with lightweight in mind. Um, they call it their grivery grip. Yeah. Um, so it's a super slim, super lightweight. I mean, I almost if you put one of these in pocket, you almost if you're used to carrying a you know, any other kind of knife, you almost don't even notice it there. It's it's so lightweight. Um, but S30, S30V steel in the blades. Nice. So you're, you're always going to get, um, you know, it's good quality blade. Um, that comes, this is the regular full size, and this is the mini. Um, they start at 130, go to 145, so uh, very affordable, on, under 150 bucks. Yeah, totally. Um, and the hottest the hottest knives Benchmate's making right now. They remind me a lot of, like, my old Purdue that oh, yeah. Benchmade had. Yep. Yeah, you know, yep. just the light, how the scales are, and you're getting some kind of neat little details here, too. Like, I just like noticing the spacers are a nice little anodized bronze gold mm -hmm. color in there. So this would be, I think, like for the person who wants to just carry a minimalist EDC, super lightweight. Absolutely. And not have it dragged down their pockets. You know, I'm thinking like dress pants, that kind of stuff, but you still want something cool in your pocket. Yep. This would be a perfect yeah, they're, kind they're, of a you know, choice. People that like to count their ounces when they're building their pack or they're, or they're yeah. what, what they're going to carry, that this is what it was designed for. Now so, it's nice. Um, and then um, I just decided to show this because everybody's familiar with the Benchmade sock piece. Uh, right. Huge with law enforcement and, you know, and... Um, Very familiar with them. Yeah, so this is the new mini sock pee. Um, and this was developed um, because people were asking for something a little bit smaller. And uh, because, you know, guys like... Phil, who carry a million things on their on their vests and on their body when they're when they're when they're working, you know it's the same thing was like with the bug out. They want to kind of minimize weight, yep. m m you know, and they want to have something that it minimizes you know space as well. So the guys who really love the sock P thought, okay, you know what, this is great, but do I need something that long? Can I have something a little bit smaller? Because most people are they're, they're using this just as a last ditch weapon anyway. So you know you don't necessarily have to kill somebody with this, but that's a that's a certainly going to make you let go, you know, if somebody grabs you or if you're in a you're in a scuffle. So right. that, that that can definitely protect you, but you know, you may not need that extra inch or inch and a half of blade versus, you know, the mini. And I'm looking at this just from a work perspective. It's one of those things where you could tuck it into like an auxiliary pouch on a carrier. Absolutely. Really easy and you don't have it protruding super high, but mm -hmm. it just you can you know where it's at. And you, you can grab it as a last stitch. Yeah, I mean, it can set up so you can, you, you can you know, for a mole, you can set up for a mole, or you can set it up, you know, to put it in your in, in your belt. You, you can be pretty much set up any, however you'd like. So yeah. Very versatile. Um, I think 95 bucks. So Can't be. It, yeah, so it's a, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been really successful for me. I um, mean, you know, I've sold to a lot of police officers. So if you're law enforcement, that might be something, you know, you're in, interested in. But uh, it's also just a great um, concealable weapon for just about anybody. Right. Cool. All right, let's keep going. All right. All right. Now I see some cool stuff here. Yeah, we're stepping up a little bit here. Uh, this is uh, Medford Knife and Tool. Uh, some a little bit fancier stuff. So if you like people a little bit more, maybe for kids. <laughs> <laughs> or you've been a really good boy this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to show a couple of the, of the newer models of Medford's, and then uh, I had to throw a fixed blade in because I just think this one's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We'll start. This is the uh, Medford Smooth Criminal that was released, I believe, last year at Blade Show. Um, 
very, very uh, popular knife. Uh, this, this is beautiful. This is Medford's uh, first kind of uh, knife in that, you know, three hundred dollar category. Um, so this this particular version is at three thirty, but they start at two ninety. Um, just a button lock flipper. Um, you know, S thirty five steel, aluminum handle. It has some really cool color combinations on this one. Um, this, you know, it's just a. They wanted to have something that was. Um, you know, Medford's known for their big, bulky knives, overbuilt right. folders. They wanted to have something more in that EDC um, pocket, you know, pocket knife that you know that everybody can carry. And this was kind of that entry level um, into that. the into the market, into that three hundred dollar market. It's it's you know it's been a really really popular knife. I've um, it's done really really well. That's just beautiful. I love the bluing on it too. Almost, it's got like a. You see that. That's a well. That's a PVD coating they put on that one. Is it? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So that's uh, that's that's kind of Medford's uh, entry level knife. And so if you uh, if you want a Medford but don't want to get into that you know five hundred dollar range, this is kind of the knife for you. Um, and it's uh, it's been really really popular. It's done well. Cool. And, and Phil's going to buy that before he leaves today. <laughs> and uh, next we'll we'll uh, this is a, another new model that they came out with this year. This is the Praetorian Slim. If anyone's familiar with Medford, they're known they're known for their Praetorians, but they're big, bulky, um, overbuilt folders. They make in several different sizes, and you'll kind of notice the uh, the blade shape of the Tanto of the uh, of the Praetorian, but it's been modified to an EDC um, carry size. I mean, it's kind of elongated, but this is the Praetorian Slim, much slimmer knife, titanium handle, S thirty five V steel. And one of the coolest anno jobs I've ever seen. That is, like, it's like a tiger stripe. Yeah, you see, I mean, that's just phenomenal. That is um, really cool. Phil almost put this in his pocket when he saw it earlier. So. Yeah, I mean, I th <laughs> there's been a lot of times where I almost put stuff in my pocket. But, you know, it's a frame lock, you know, all titanium handle. Um, just a really cool knife. Uh, and obviously, you know, very lightweight and slim, so much more pocket friendly than some of their bigger models. Uh, this particular version goes for 595 I just love the detail on it. Like even just the they the, the hardware. And the, stuff. the hardware's matches. Yep. I mean, it's yep. just like so super cool. It's one of those where that would be. I don't have a lot of safe queens, you know. Oh. And, and it, it, Mark knows I basically use everything I buy, and but this one would be a hard one not to just be like, la. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like maybe, maybe bring it out on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, or just like you're sitting there, you're just like, yeah, you're around the house, you're like, here, you need some, you know, like. You'd whip it out. That would be the only downside to this one, honestly, is the old missus would be like, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard to hide that one. It's not in tactical black. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, and, of course, I had to put one one uh, um, fixed blade out here. And I just got this back in. This, like, I, whenever I've gotten this in, it's usually sold immediately. So I want to have a chance to show it um, while I have it. This is the Medford. USMC fighter and you, you'll know I mean it looks like the old K bar right you know uh, knives the fighting knives from you know World War two and it but look at the blade thickness on this you can see you know it is beefy it's a beefy knife beautiful layered g10 handle I mean it's just it's just a really cool knife and the and the uh, they made it look old school with the awesome leather sheath they made for it I mean this is just a really nice looking knife all around. I mean, it's another one of those. I was like, man, I would love to carry that, but man, I'd hate to mess that up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it's like I have like in it, before we got going, I was telling Mark, you know, it's like, gosh, that one would look absolutely perfect next to my Chris Reeve Green Beret, right? When you start thinking about just some of the stuff that's been designated for the different branches of service mm -hmm. and how the history behind them, and of course, everyone knows about the K bars, right? Right? It's just one of those kinds of things. But this is like. A bazillion times crazier yeah, in quality. Take it to another level. Like, yeah, 50 other levels. Yep, I mean, yep. this thing is just gorgeous. And it's like when the first time I picked this up in my hand, it's almost, it has a weight. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> like, you know, it's not a chopper. Right. But you could almost see swinging this and just taking out a tree. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you would never do that with this knife. Maybe but, you but would. But it's not overly heavy. Either. But it's not. But I mean, just the heft, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's balanced. That's the thing about it, too, yeah. is it's the handle. It just feels like you've got just something, you you know, the, obviously the backside for blunt, you know, for striking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, beautiful. This one might be on my short list. Yeah, that's that's one. It's I've had a really difficult when I've gotten them in. They've 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 pretty much sold immediately. It's been a really, really popular why. knife. Just to, 
And uh, that that belief, I believe that just came out last year. So that you know, that's another reason. Anything Medford comes out when it's new, usually it sells quickly. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. That's super cool. And I think five and a quarter on that one. It's actually, which, you know, I say, well, actually, you know, we're talking about upper end stuff here, but mm. you get what you pay for, obviously. Right. Right. We're talking about some like Medford's a small batch. They're not, you know, making a bazillion knives. They're not your Gerbers of the world. Right. Right. And so, so I know a lot for a lot of people thinking five and a quarter, these guys smoking something, but no, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, when you get into the, some of the higher end quality stuff, that's not, that's not mass marketed. That's kind of, kind of the normal range. And Heck, there's knives that go up in thousands oh, of yeah. dollars. Yeah, I can I can attest to that. You so start, start getting in the custom world, it gets it gets expensive quick. Yeah, and for somebody like who maybe doesn't want to jump into the custom world though, something like the Medford here would be that nice, um, you know, like that gateway, right? You know, it kind of fills that void where oh, yeah. you're getting something of that level, you know, for the most part, and you get you got a nice interesting look. Like some of the Protex are that way too that you were showing mm -hmm. me. Protect, I know, has done a bunch of cool stuff with some handles and so forth that just are a little bit different. Right. And it gives you that that little bit of a unique look for somebody who might be looking for that kind of stuff. Super cool. Cool. All right, so I think that pretty much covers the knives that we wanted to talk about today for the most yeah. part, right? Yeah. And maybe a couple more here or there, some little ones or something, but like literally little ones. Um, but we'll take a look at some of the accessories and stuff, and you can just tell us about some of the other stuff that you have here because we also realize that it's maybe one of those things where I realize my intent in coming out here today was just also to kind of showcase some of the other stuff that Mark has here because while knives are his focus, he's got some other stuff. You mentioned kitchen cutlery, and I'll put some B-roll in here and stuff like that, and we'll kind of show what else is out there. Shuns are incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, great kitchen knife, you know, um, it just does a fantastic job. I've got some axes and stuff like that over here, too. Yeah, so cool. let's just take a look at that kind of stuff, and then we'll just wrap it up, and we'll thank Mark, and we'll get out of here, and we'll have a day off. All right, sweet. All right, so now what we're going to take a look at. Oh, I just figured I'd, I'd pick out some like, gift ideas that, you know, kind of $75 and under people can give as a gift to our EDC enthusiast. Um, first, uh, the ever-popular Spyderco Sharpmaker. Um, if somebody who likes knives and wants to take care of knives on their own, but they don't want to learn how to use a, a flat stone, which can be very frustrating if you don't practice right. with them. The Spyderco Sharpmaker is an easy way to get an edge on just about anything, um, unless you get into the really, really hard super steels, and it can be a little bit more um, tedious. But for most pot, I mean, it's self-taught, it's easy to use, and at 75 bucks, you don't have to spend you know a fortune like you would with uh, like a wicked edge wicked system edge, or, yeah. or like a pro edge or something right, like edge right. pro but, stuff but like you, that i can get a, a really good edge on just about any steel with this um and yeah know. i know because like even some of just my some of my some of my stones from my from my wicked i mean they're like 80 bucks a pop yep, yep. you know we're talking just to get it to like six thousand grit or yep, like you absolutely. start you have multiple grits and if you're into the mirrored finish thing this is probably not what you're looking mm -hmm. for right but right. that's not what the purpose of this is yeah it's, you know it'll give you a good good uh, working edge i mean you can, I, I can take this and I, I mean, within, within a minute, I can get, you know, so you can just slice paper like. Yeah, sh -sh -sh -sh. that's what most people, it's, it's so, the paper test, right? Or yeah. the shave in your arm. Yeah. So you're, you're going to get sharp enough that you need for what you, for most people are going to use for just about any use. Yeah. Um, so uh, that, so, and then some items that, that I think are cool under $50. This was an item that came out last year, uh, the CRKT CEO, um, Richard Rogers design, um, which was the executive that's why they call this the CEO. Makes sense, right? Um, just a great knife, great value. It was not, it was actually Blade Show Knife of the Year last year. Um, Forty dollars. I mean, just amazing value. Very slender. Right. Perfect, perfect knife for like a business executive. Something they can put in their shirt pocket or jacket pocket. Um, you know, people come. People think it's like a letter opener, but I mean, it's a nice. It's knife. very elegant looking. Very I mean, elegant, I... Elegant, perfect, perfect knife for somebody who. Who doesn't want to carry something that looks tactical, but they want to have something on them you know, when they're dressed up, or like I said, for someone who works in the office. Yeah. You know? So that that's been a incredibly popular knife, one of, one of my best sellers over, over the course of the last year. Um, another item that, that's come back the the Olight O pen. Um, pen. Pen. Pen and flashlight. Ooh. <laughs> Light. So kind of nifty, and uh, these are almost. I, I, I just ordered a bunch because I knew they were going to be a hot item for Christmas at 50 bucks. Oh yeah. You know, at 50 bucks, you know, you know, you get something that a lot of the tactical pens on the market can get really expensive really quick. Super quick. So at $50, you get a, you get a pen that has a light in it. Kind of neat. O lights makes good stuff. Yep. Um, so you got something that I think is a great, you can either a gift or a stocking stuffer at $50 and not, not, you know, I think a good value. Yeah, totally. And then, um, if I, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but I'm a nine line, uh, apparel, uh, um, dealer 
Um, and Nine Line makes some really cool stuff. Plus, they're a veteran-owned company. Absolutely, Very I support patient. them. I love it. You know, so I, I really like their stuff. Um, I picked this hat for. Um, I think it's a cool hat. Number one, multicam black. You can't go wrong. Right, right. But also because it has the Velcro front, so you can do the patches. Yep. You put on the front, so you can change them out. So I think it's a cool thing. These are you know like around thirty dollars. You know, and you get pick up different patches for six, seven dollars. You can kind of change it out. Something that's you know support a great company that does uh, veteran helps to help veteran causes, and uh, they make some really cool stuff. So I, I I'm. Uh, Big supporter of that. So yeah, I've got a lot of their stuff. You you guys have seen me rocking it out on the channel quite a bit, and this is actually where I get it from. So um, yeah, there's a lot, of, just a lot of other cool stuff in here. I wish we could spend more time just going like you guys. You have like no idea how much cool stuff he has in here. I mean, we just took a sampling of some of the stuff that he pulled out, but I'm just you guys can't see it. I'm kind of looking over your camera. He's got pelican cases for you know for the collectors if you want to keep your knives in a nice airtight you know humidity controlled you know box. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm looking at all the hats, the apparel. I'll be putting some B-roll and stuff like that in here for sure. But, yeah, it's just overall just an amazing, cool shop. And I'm so glad that, you know, it really has become a destination. You know, I brought one of my buddies down here, and I think, I don't know how often he comes in. Pretty often, though. I'm talking about Justin. And yeah, he's been in a few times. He's been in a few times. And um, I think the only other thing, did you want to show off a couple of axes or, real quick? Well, we do have uh, we do have some axes. Uh, we, You know, and we, I've got some different levels of axes. You know, if you look at... Uh, I carry some CRKT axes that start as low as fifty-five dollars. Uh, so if you like more of the traditional tomahawk look, yeah, there we go. You know, something like that. I, I've got the. I keep. I try to keep those in stock. Those are really difficult to. Right really there. difficult to keep in stock, but uh, I, I do carry um, some di like four different CRKT uh, tomahawks. Um, so if you want something that's not, uh, you know, more expensive, I think they range from fifty-five to one hundred and forty. Okay. So, so not bad. Know, pretty affordable. I also do have um, in stock some Hogue axes and a Spiderco axe that are, you know, more expensive in that three hundred to four hundred range or so. Um, so if you, you know you can see those on my website, they're they're available on my website, but uh, or you can come in and check them out. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, with that, I guess with that being said, you know, we can just take. I want to take a recap, and the website is bladesmansknifeshop.com. Yep. Um, follow Mark on Instagram at Bladesman's Knife Shop. You can also find him on Facebook. Absolutely. Right, and um, it's one of those things. I just want to take an opportunity to say thanks for having me out on oh, the day off. Doing kind of having. A, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. It's something a little bit atypical that I don't do here, but as you guys know from some of the other videos that I've been putting out, I really want to take an opportunity to look at more of the EDC lifestyle holistically, some of the stuff that I use at work on duty, some of the stuff that is just like the CEO. You know, not everybody that watches my channel is going to be, you know, the, the tactical guy. There's going to be, people are going to come across it. And I wanted to try and broaden out a little bit and make sure that there was enough out there. And with holiday coming up, it just seemed like it was a perfect time to come in and do a field trip, you know, have a little bit of show and tell, right. get a little bit of knowledge from Mark. He's super knowledgeable. Um, super great guy to talk to. So I, I can't thank you enough for having us in today. And Absolutely. If anybody, I mean, if anybody ever has questions, you know, if you see something on your website, you know, feel free, give me a call um, or message me on uh, Instagram or Facebook. Happy to answer any questions. I know the knife world can get very overwhelming with different steels and different materials. You know, feel free to give me a call or uh, or message me if you have questions about anything. Awesome. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you guys found it interesting, value, you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified, all that jazz that I normally say. And from Mark and I, until next time, stay safe. See you guys.